Good morning. Welcome to Cincy Lifestyle. Happy Friday and Mona. Happy opening day. So many people, and including our own Allie, says she is jazzed about opening day. So even in its modifications, you know, people are really excited. Yeah, they are. It's uh, down to 60 games this year, but uh, this, is, this is the year they go for it all. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yay, Reds. <laughs> hey, Mona, while we're celebrating, let's uh, point to something that's kind of an, an emblem of the times. This is National Okay. drive through day. And you know, folks have been doing a lot of drive through here lately, but drive through actually, did you know, Mona, and you might remember this, goes all the way back <laughs> to the <laughs> 1930s when they first started doing drive throughs <laughs> And now, well, because of the pandemic, they're real popular these days. Oh, yeah, Clyde, I remember you telling me about when you went through the drive through when it first opened. Um, Good one. But, yes. Do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite drive through that you go through? I do. It's a certain fried chicken vendor that I like to visit as uh, often as possible. May have dinner there today, as a matter of fact. You know, one of one of my favorites, and I really don't eat the food that much anymore, but somehow White Castle, <laughs> their food is always so hot. I just, I don't understand. I mean, you get it and you can hardly touch it. It's so hot. So I don't, and, and I love their crinkle cut fries. So I just, I just love their drive through because you can still get really hot yep. food. Yeah. So yeah. There, I mean, there's a great premium on that. You can't beat really hot food. I, I know exactly That's how you right. feel. Hey, Mona, a little bit later That's on in the show, we're going to talk to an Olympic gold medalist about her book teach you the signs of a damaged house foundation and will introduce you to an exciting corporate thriller. But first, Ooh. but first. Yeah. Yes, Clyde. Music is a universal language and lyrics have the power to speak to our core. And there's one local lyrical artist who has partnered with United Way in more ways than one to express her interpretation of United Way's impact in our community and how the power of community can make powerful change. Allie has the story. Oh, uh, well, community means everything to me. I, I literally have Natty Girl tatted on my knuckles because uh, Cincinnati is everything for me. You may recognize her from lounge acts, CSO's Look Around event, or even the Cincinnati Entertainment Awards. Siri Amani and her group Tribe have been a voice in our Cincinnati community, pushing justice, conversation, and unity. And now she's partnered with United Way to continue that message by collaborating on a music video. Because United Way reached out to me um, for their manifesto to figure out a, a way to communicate and articulate the direction that they want to take going and investing into these grassroots community uh, leaders. And they wanted someone who came from the community to be able to speak to the community and kind of portray that message. What they didn't know is simultaneously I was receiving a grant from them completely unrelated uh, for my own garden that I've been trying to work out for years now and I've never been able to get funding. So being able to explain like, not only is this what it looks like, but I am a product of somebody taking a chance on my business, on my, my goal and vision for the community and funding it. And so when I created the, the piece, I basically used um, a little bit of you know what their mission is, just kind of the logistics and, and facts of it. But then I also added like my personal experience and how it makes me feel being someone who is finally getting the chance that they deserve, in my opinion, to extend out resources to the community that they love. And not only myself, but everybody in the video is also a recipient of the United Way grant and was able to do that for the community they love as well. So. So when she contacted us about doing the video, we were so excited. We know that um, the plans that she has with her garden and being a United Way funding um, sister organizations, we were like, yes, come on in. We have a wonderful raised garden bed in the back. We can shoot some lovely footage. And we believe in what you're trying to do to bring the community together through this urban gardening piece and just trying to um, reach out to the community, let them have entrepreneurial opportunities, have them have access to healthy foods because we are in a food desert. We were all for all of those things to make sure that we're supporting our sister United Way organization, but then also benefiting our community here in the West End. As far as the video itself, I just hope that it is able to impact someone in a direct way, so that way they know either, one, where to look, where to come, right, so these people can serve you, or how can you help. Just as long as you are seeing this and it is pulling on your heartstrings, 
I think we did our job, so. I want this community to become a tribe. I would say it just, that's why I create a tribe. I think that Cincinnati has the potential to be a tribe. We can get everyone on one accord if we can connect and empathize. And I think all it takes is just visibility from every type of person that we have here. If everyone takes the time to reach out to each other, to connect with each other, to just listen to each other. We have so much power and potential. And if we come together and use it, We'll figure out a way to turn this city into something I'm sure nobody's ever seen, because I've already seen it in small pockets, but if we were able to truly collaborate and get everybody here, all 52 neighborhoods involved, we would have something beautiful. We would be able to translate that to the world and we would be able to see it ourselves. Wow, I now want to welcome an important member to our tribe, <laughs> Allie, into the conversation. So, Allie, you know what? Uh, PK, our director, and I were just reminiscing. We love both of those ladies, and Tia actually worked yes. here for a few years, and we just love her. Yes, yes. She was fantastic to talk to and so, so passionate uh, about Seven Hills neighborhood houses, and, and I think her story is interesting, and the whole story of how everyone came together for this piece um, is even cooler. So, Allie, you know, the, this conversation really is about cross-pollination, and it, and it requires that there be a willingness to break down walls that have traditionally been erected. Do you sense that they are finding that willingness out there in a sustaining way? Yes, I do. And this is where nonprofits like United Way really, really help, because Tia mentioned, you know, being a part of a food desert and affordable housing is a really, really big part of that. And and we're talking, you know, houses that are a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollars, and and just making the neighborhood a sense of community and cleanliness. And yes, they they are feeling that sense of community and and change in a positive way of staying together. And like I said, nonprofits like United Way are a huge uh, benefactor for them. And that's why someone like Siri, who comes involved, who gets involved and is able to produce this music video to highlight communities like that, um, I think are really, really beneficial. And, and as Mona said, you know, music is a universal language and it allows people to connect in a different way. And I hope people hear that and see that and really listen to the lyrics. Um, Cause she really is a, a, a lyrical genius. <laughs> She really, she really is. Yeah. And without further ado, let's take a look at the video. In any revolution, there's always been many ways. Ways to lead through action. Ways to serve through purpose. Ways to bring change as a collective and ways to get the job done. For me, this hope of change had always been lonely. Limited and hard, like it mattered to me only growing up in poverty. It seemed like a distant dream for me to own something for myself in the midst of the monopolies. Rewrite my story from tragedy to glory and make proud ancestors out of those that came before me. I often hear this debate over which way is the best way. Who's right and who's wrong? Who's weak and who's strong? The answer, <laughs> we all are. Like every individual star it takes to light up the sky in the thick of the dark. Like every individual brush stroke that led to a beautiful piece of art. Like every vein that maintains a heart united and stuck together, we are. At the end of the day, the only way is the united way. Amplifying all voices, harnessing the collective power and resources, lifting families out of poverty, opening more educational opportunities, providing access to health care, and overall being there. Our city is no stranger to deeply rooted problems. Now is the time for comprehensive solutions. We must create the change we envision for ourselves, for us, by us. To truly lift up our city would be the biggest honor. Using over 140 partner organizations to maximize donor dollars for grassroots organizations currently smaller, the United Way is how my community will have a garden and my children with no ownership. The United Way shows we're all branches on the same tree and sometimes we just gotta grow together to notice it. If we decide as a community we don't like what we see, we must fight it. For a tribe like mine, we choose to do it united. United is the way. Setting 
Setting goals can be tough, especially for kids. We have an Olympic gold medalist from Cincinnati who went from athlete to author. She recently released her book, I Didn't Win, to help children follow their goals and deal with disappointment. And we're glad to welcome Mary Weinberg, an Olympic gold medalist who has turned the page to a new chapter of becoming a children's book author. Mary, thank you so much for talking to us. Thanks, Clyde. Thanks for having me here. I'm very excited to talk to everyone. In your book, I Didn't Win, you teach young readers to follow their goals and to not give up. So when did you realize you wanted to write such a motivating book? You know, I realized that I wanted to write a children's book um, just after being in education for over 10 years. I am a teacher. I teach second grade. So I've been around elementary, you know, students and friends and my friends who have kids um, of those ages and also my own two children. And I realized that children have a difficult time with not winning. I get that they're competitive. I love their competitive spirit, but they tend to struggle when they don't win a race, when they don't win this, or they don't get that certain grade. And I wanted kids to understand that, you know, even an Olympic gold medalist went through that. You know, I started off with my career not winning races at all, literally losing every single race and feeling, you know, down about it and disappointed. But I had to realize Let's start over, let's set a new goal, and let's keep pushing forward and never give up. And that's what happens in the book with Jackson. And how long did it take to write the book? So the book took over about a year, but when I say a year, it was more of coming up with the concept and the idea. And usually for me, I'm pretty determined, and I have unwavering perseverance, as I did in my very first book. So I said I wanted to get done with the story. So it took me a couple of months to actually write everything together, kind of edit it with my husband, kind of share it with my children to see, hey, do they even like it? And then trying to find the illustrator was the biggest thing for me. I wanted someone to capture Jackson. I wanted someone to capture myself in the book. And also my children are in the book as well. And so once I found um, the illustrator, we kind of took a couple more months to piece everything together. And, you know, of course, getting it back and, and sending it back to her and getting it back and making corrections. And then finally, with the final product, I was very happy. So what is it you hope people who read your book take away from what you have to share? You know, whether you're an adult or whether you're a child, I want readers to take from the book that no matter what happens in life, you can never give up. You also have to learn how to be able to set goals and be okay with not winning. And not to say that I want everyone to fail and to be and to lose, but it's also the it's the process of life. You have to learn how to deal with hard things and also with easy things. So in the book, Jackson, he wants to be the fastest kid in the state. He starts off with being the fastest kid in the county. But then he learns that, hey, did you give your best? Did you try? And that's all that matters. And where can young readers find your book? Totally. I actually am uh, participating in a very big event on Saturday at 9 p.m. If people want to log into Airbnb and log on to Olympic Experiences, they can actually purchase an experience of Mary Weinberg doing her story time. And if they don't do that, they can also go to MaryWeinberg.com, and the book is also on Amazon. All right, Mary, thank you so much for talking to us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Hey, coming up here on Cincy Lifestyle, it's a corporate conspiracy. In a novel, that is, and you're going to want to read it. We'll talk to local author Greg Stallworth about his nail-biter of a book he says was based on a true story. It's called Crosswires, and we'll tell you all about it. Just stay with us. We'll be right back. Conspiracy and mystery abound in a book penned by a local author. The book is called Crosswires, and I want to welcome Greg Stallworth, who is the author of the book Crosswires. Thank you so much for joining us, Greg. Well, thank you for having me on. Thank you, Mona. Absolutely. So for those who haven't read it yet, give us a summary of what your book is about. You know, I do a lot of research, Mona. Um, dealing with uh, the corporate structure across America. It took about a year or so doing research. And one of, one of the things I found out is that in corporate America, so many great things are going on. And But then, yet and still, there's some corruption that happens that gets kind of silenced by finances and money. Um, in this book, Crosswires, I used a 
uh, individual who was very successful in corporate America. In fact, he helped the corporation reach Fortune 500 status. But along the way, he found out that through a accidental transfer of wires in the phones that he was informed about corruption that was going on at its highest level. And he was put in a situation where he either had to silence himself to keep his job and credibility or tell what is really going on and face the perils of possibly losing his job and also possible, possibly his life. So it's a very interesting book. Wow. Okay. So kind of, can you say it's kind of loosely built on a true story? Yes. Yes, it is. It's built on uh, somewhat of a true story, but it has a real positive ending, you know. And plus, I tried to show a family, especially African-American corporate executive, in a very positive light and made sure that the, the work was very understanding and very reasonable. So uh, it was something that I really enjoyed, but I took a lot of time and effort in putting this together. Well, we've got a couple seconds left. Do you have a, a little advice for budding authors? Yes, I do. Uh, in fact, I'm really, one of my goals in the future is to help other African-American authors who might want to be inspired to write. I think writing is a skill that really can help a person in their whole self-awareness. And, and I strongly encourage those who have a story to take time to write their story and potentially get it published or even put it on stage, which I did and was very successful with. All right, Greg, thank you so much. Greg Stallworth, the book is Crosswires. Thanks for talking to us today. And thank you so much, Mona. Got a question for you. Have you noticed cracks on the interior or exterior of your home? Or maybe your doors don't open and close properly. How about that? Well, we checked out a foundation stabilization job with Jayco waterproof, uh, waterproofing, I should say, to learn what warning sign to look for and how Jayco can solve it. Take a look. So today we're in Florence, Kentucky. We are on a repair job. We are installing foundation piers. Foundation piers stabilize your home or lift the foundation of the home. Keeping your foundation stable is important and it is one of the most important repair jobs that we do because it is the bones of the home. It is your structural foundation underneath your home and that's what holds it all together. A common misconception is that this repair is only done in older homes where in reality it actually can happen to brand new homes that were just built. It can also happen in commercial buildings, not only just residential homes. Mother Nature takes a toll and the ground moves and settles and it can cause the foundation to shift. Signs of foundation failure you can look for are interior and exterior. Interior, you may see a crack in the drywall of your home or in the floor um, of the basement, the concrete floor. You could also have hard to open windows and doors or gaps above your windows and doors. That might be a sign of it as well. Exterior, you can look for things such as cracks in the foundation wall if it is exposed, or you could also see cracks in the brick. Um, typically, we call those stair step cracks. You could see those. Those are all signs for foundation failure. So after seeing signs of foundation failure, the steps that we recommend taking are calling Jayco. Once we are contacted, Jayco will work hand in hand with an engineer. We will provide you the most cost effective and best solution for your foundation. We do offer two types of piers. We offer a helical pier and a resistance pier. The resistance pier, people know it as a push pier. The only difference between the two is a helical is more of like a screw and a push pier or a resistant pier is just flat on the bottom. It just pushes the house up or lifts the foundation up. Typically a peering job can range from one to two days to maybe one to two weeks. The job that we are on currently today has taken about two weeks and will continue to take a little longer just due to the amount of piers that we are installing. A regular foundation with maybe just a few piers that we are installing there could only take about two to three days. So if you do see signs of your foundation settling or foundation issues, feel free to give us a call or visit our website for more information. 
Now, for more information on foundation repairs, visit jacowaterproofing.com or give them a call 1-800-410-JACO to schedule an appointment. And you can do that today. Mona? Well, we'll be right back with more Cincy Lifestyle on the other side of the break. Plus, have you checked us out on Facebook? I've been telling you to do this for a long time. You will not be sorry. We post all our guest segments there and community stories so you can watch them and share them with your friends. So like and follow us right now at Facebook.com slash Cincy Lifestyle. We'll be right back. Quick look outside right now. Happy opening day. We're going to flirt with the 90s today. Partly cloudy, minimal chance of rain back into the low 90s for the weekend. Mona, take us home. Oh, well, Clyde, you know what? Next week, coming up here on Cincy Lifestyle, we're going to be breaking bread. That's right. We'll go behind the scenes of the 16 bricks to learn how this artisan bakery is producing thousands of fresh loaves to local chefs and restaurants every single day. Look at that. It looks good. Well then, have you ever heard of a musical genre called shoegaze? We'll introduce you to that style of music with the help of the local band Slow Glows. All that and more next week, Mona. All right, Clyde. Hey, thank you guys for watching. And be sure to reach out to us. All the ways are right there on the screen. We love hearing from you. Have a great weekend, but first, make it a great day. Thanks for watching our video, and if you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before, or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, we love to say it, make it a great day.